Welcome to The Connection, a weekly radio program where we share our experiences and expertise with stories of caring, courage, and change right here in Connecticut. Listen to learn about needed resources to improve your well-being and transform your life. Now, here are the hosts of The Connection, Lisa dematis Lapore and Ann Baldwin. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Connection right here on WTIC News Talk 1080. Uh, my name is Ann Baldwin, President and CEO of Baldwin Media, and we've got Charles Barber back in the studio today. Charlie, good morning. Good morning, Ann. How's it going? Good. How have you been since we last saw each other? I've been working hard. Good. Well, that's that's a main thing, and that's what happens over at The Connection. Lisa dematis Lapore is um, not in today, so we're very pleased to have you in the hot seat with me, and we've got a great program um, all scheduled for folks because you at The Connection have your big annual conference coming up, and you've got a great keynote speaker, which is always one of the challenges, right, of putting a good conference on that people want to attend and that they feel that they've really gotten something out of attending that because these conferences, you know, they cost money, yep. and they take time, and time in some cases is money. So um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that with our guest who's joining us, and you want to go ahead and do the honors? Yes, absolutely. Um so the Connection is hosting its annual conference for the public uh, and also our staff. And it's on Monday, October 22nd, coming up pretty soon. It's at Westland University in Middletown. It's from 9 to 5. And all the details can be found on our website, theconnectioninc.org. And uh, the theme of this year's conference is that we do this conference. We've done it every year for 15 years. Mm-hmm. I must say... I was very involved in the early days, sort of putting them together. Now I'm a bit of a, uh, a non-innocent bystander to them, and I must say they are really high quality. I, I, I can say that because I'm not so involved. I can almost see it objectively. Right, right. And um, the theme for this year is it's called Meaningful Connections, Exploring Engagement in Human Services. It is um, accredited through the National Association of Social Workers, and people can get CEU credits. The theme of it is how to engage uh, clients into our services, because a lot of times we have the treatments, but it's trying to get people uh, engaged and motivated and uh, to, to, towards those treatments. And um, also, and this pertains to David O'Brien, our, um, our guest today, who will be the keynote, engaging uh, staff into the workforce and trying to be the best employer and employees that we can have. So on that note, I'd like to introduce David. Uh, David is president of Work Choice Solutions, a trusted provider of leadership training, coaching, and consulting services that was founded in 2000. And uh, he's written a couple books on management and leadership. One's called The Navigator's Handbook. 101 Leadership Lessons for Work and Life, and the second uh, kind of a follow-up is The Navigator's Compass. So welcome, David. Thank you, Charlie, for that kind introduction. Thank you, Anne, as well, for having me on the show today. It's great to be with you. Absolutely. Well, you know, David, um, one of the trends, and I'm sure you're very well aware of this, is you know, everybody strives, or a lot of people strive, to be a top workplace. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how do you do that? And, and Charlie just mentioned a couple of things. Um, and it, I guess it kind of depends upon the business. But, you know, we looked at um, what you're going to really speak to in this conference. So why don't I, I kind of let you go with that? Because it's, uh, you know, I think it's a, a lesson that could be learned for all of us. Because we get so engaged in, you know, doing the day-to-day business. How do we engage those around us or the clients that we, that we serve? And that's what you'll be talking about. That's correct, Dan. Yes, thank you. And, and so I think it might be helpful to start off and create a little more context. So the, over the last 30 years, I have been exploring the vast realm of leadership and organizational effectiveness, really in the context of, so what separates really great leaders, really great organizations from all of the rest? And of course, there are a number of things. There are a number of factors. But one of them that I think continues to stand out is that leaders a key role in making those organizations great. And it really starts with leadership. It starts at the top, of course, as we know, but it acknowledges that everybody can be a leader. And and in 30 years of doing this work, you both would imagine, and our listeners would imagine that in that time frame, 
I've learned a few things about this topic, and, and that's true. But I think as a standout, one of the most important lessons I've learned about this topic, and it certainly applies to everyone at the conference, is that leadership is a choice. It's really about a choice we make. It's not limited to those of us that have direct reports. It's not limited to those of us that have a job title, or for that matter, people that actually have a job. It really is a choice. And when we begin from that place of truth, and I reference it as my place of truth because it's one of the, the most important lessons I've learned, and I, and I use it as a guidepost because I, I've come to believe that everybody has some capacity to be a role model. Everybody has some capacity to lead. And that leads me to a second lesson that's equally powerful, equally important, and frankly, a guidepost for me in my day-to-day -day living. And that is that leadership is an opportunity to be a role model for the behavior we wish to see in others. Let me say it again, if I may, please. Leadership is the opportunity to be a role model for the behavior we wish to see in others. We all have influence. Everyone has influence. And how we use that influence has a really big impact on the kind of organizations we create, the kind of relationships we have. And so from that beginning point, that frame of reference that one of the key common, common denominators is that leaders are playing a big role in this, but they're also seeing it as having the capacity to bring that out in others. And I think those are two very key parts, which I'll talk about, of course, in the, in the keynote. David, um, I have the advantage of, of having some of your notes towards your keynote, and I was really struck by, um, by a, a concept or a phrase in them where you talk about um, examining behavioral reactions, victim, critic, bystander, and navigator. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can explain. I I'm sure it pertains to what you just said. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it starts with my own personal journey, Charlie. Let me thank you for asking that question and for queuing into that. So 20 years ago, probably pretty close to 20 years ago now, I was at what by most standards or measures, would be considered the pinnacle of my career. I had achieved the level of senior vice president. I was running a division for a major company. I had all of the things that went with that, including the stress. And I was traveling quite a bit. I was traveling extensively, actually. And I came to a place in that journey where I had lost my spark. I had lost my passion. I was, frankly, feeling burnt out. And I had some wonderful people, close people in my life, who gave me that feedback. And it made me take notice, and it made me evaluate all of that to the point where I walked away. I walked away from what many people thought was the pinnacle of my career. How could I possibly walk away without having another job? But I decided to walk away in part through my faith, in part through a terrific support network around me, but also with the hope that there'd be some learning from this. And that became kind of the motivator for me, that if I could take this experience and learn from it, that would help shape me for the next 20 years, let's say, or the rest of my life, let's say. And so that being the case, I gave myself permission to take a year off. I took what I refer to in my first book as my sabbatical. And in that time frame, I did a lot of journaling, a lot of soul searching, a lot of connecting with, with important people, mentors in my life, guides in my life. And one of the things that I came to discover as I look back over the previous 15 years, we'll say, at that point in my career was that there were many points, there were several points in my career where I was extremely successful, high end successful, at the top of my game, making a very good living, having all the things that go with that, having fun. And that at another point in my career or two, I was just the opposite of that. I was miserable. I was probably the guy that had the calendar in his office that would check off how many days till retirement, you know. Mm -hmm. 6,821 days to retirement, check. And, and no matter how it worked, no matter what kind of environment it was, I just didn't feel valued. I didn't feel appreciated. I really had a bad attitude. And I became to re began to realize through that sabbatical experience that two factors had influenced those two outcomes more significantly than anything else. One was my attitude, and the other was my behavior. So when I was at a place of peak performance, having joy in my work and job satisfaction and making a difference, I was operating from a place of what I call 
my navigator perspective. And the navigator perspective is simply allowing my moral compass to guide me. I think everyone has a moral compass. I think our values reside in our moral compass. And one of the things that I've learned about leaders over the years is that really good leaders have that in common, too. You know, if I, only, oh, sorry. Ahead. You know, one of the things that you just brought up, David, is, um, and if you're just tuning in, we're speaking with David O'Brien. He's the president of Work Choice Solutions, and he will be the keynote speaker at the Connections uh, annual conference, which is coming up on Monday, October 22nd. You can go to theconnectioninc.org if you're interested in more information on that. And also Charlie Barber, my, my co-host here. You know, you hit a little bit of a nerve with me when you were talking about you know, you can achieve a certain goal, um, but are you really happy? You know, mm -hmm. I, I kind of look at my, like even my sobriety. Am I, am I really working my recovery or am I a dry drunk, right? Mm -hmm. So as a television news anchor, you know, I was at the top of my game almost. I mean, I was the weekend yeah. anchor. I was making good yeah. money. I was on TV, right? Yeah. But yeah. I was freaking miserable. Yeah. You know, I tell my kids, I'll be at your concert at 6 o'clock, and then next thing you know, I'm live in Bridgeport, and I miss a concert. You know, those things yeah, in life yeah, that yeah. really do matter. Um, and, and what you said there was sometimes you need to take a break, but sometimes it's not always a break by choice. For mm -hmm. example, I had hit the glass ceiling. My contract mm -hmm. wasn't going to be renewed. So had I not now what I look at as an opportunity, been given that opportunity to figure out, okay, that was fun for a while, but now what? And yeah. then I started my own business, and fast forward 22 years, here I am. Yeah, good for you. You know, it's uh, it's hard, though, sometimes for people to break from the reality because I do believe that you get accustomed to the paycheck. Oh, it, it, it blinds you, you know. And, and I will tell you, and I'm, I'm sure you'll relate to this, and others will listening will relate to it as well, that so I, I, I kept, I think, at some level just brushing that feedback off from people denying it, not accepting it, finding 27 reasons why they're wrong and I'm right, mm -hmm. rationalizing all of it, until the point where, frankly, wife said to me one time, you know, guys your age have heart attacks and you're not that much fun to hang out with anymore. Mm -hmm. You've got to start paying attention to this. And that, you know, of course, I brushed it off immediately, but then probably connecting with my next airline flight out of Philly, because I was traveling a lot then, it sank in. And, I, and that, that, was, that was kind of the, a catalyst or the genesis of making that big decision. But the net result was those behaviors played out. And as I reflected on it and journaled on it and spent a year exploring it, I came to realize that those four behaviors had major impact on how I showed up, how I, my level of job satisfaction I had, the level of impact I had, and not surprisingly, my reputation. And so uh, I David, I'd, I'd like to ask you um, in, in a second about how you impart, you know, what sounds like a life-changing moment, you know, mm -hmm. to employees. It sounds like it all has to do with finding, helping people find meaning in their work. I um, think it's a big part of it, yeah. But just hearing, and your story and David's story, it just reminds me of, it's actually one of my favorite songs, the John Lennon song, Watching the Wheels. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, here's the guy, he's at the top of, I mean, he's probably the most famous person in the world, and, you know, right. and he went into a sabbatical, he, you know, kind of retired, and then coming out of that retirement, you know, his last, um, tragically, of course, his last album, Watching the Wheels, where he's just saying, people, you know, you're not at the top of the charts anymore, what's wrong with you, yeah. people think I'm crazy, I just want to watch the wheels go round and round. The irony is that it was the reinvention of his career, you know, creating this new perspective on yeah. on success. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, Which becomes very powerful and clearly a guidepost, right? It becomes kind of a, it, it's, and I'm sure, Ian, you can relate to it in your situation, it becomes a new, a new path, a new roadmap, right? Because it, and I think in that, in that period of reflection, call it sabbatical or whatever we'd like to call it, or it is, I think that creates that clarity. And, and I think that's a big, big part of what this keynote is about. It's about understanding the power of that clarity. That clarity. I think at some level, it's about giving yourself permission to explore what that means. I, I use the word permission a lot in my work. It's okay. We're all busy. We're all really, really busy. Nobody is sitting around with free time on their hands. We're busier than we've ever been. The world we live in is full of distractions. It's a perfect storm of distractions. It's not easy, but taking the time, giving yourself, and I say permission again, to consider these things, to explore these things, to reflect on these things, 
maybe you don't have the, the benefit or the opportunity to take a large time amount of time to do that, but what's five or ten minutes a day? In, in fact, if I can just add, in the program, one of the closing parts of the keynote will be this 21-day challenge that I have. Oh, great. And I have, I have five strategies that people can employ on a 21-day cycle, and we know the conventional thinking tells us that it takes 21 days to form a habit or break a habit, and so the hope here is this 21-day challenge will afford people an opportunity to pick up a new habit relative to their capacity to be leaders, relative to their capacity to have joy in their work, to make a difference, to, to, to be part of something bigger than themselves. There are five of them, and the intent behind five is that by giving the group a range, there's more than likely, it's pretty reasonable to say that everybody will be able to identify with at least one of them. But the last one is this compass calibration technique, and I save it for the end for a number of reasons, but one of them specifically is that we will be walking through the entire activity, the entire technique, and it's very simply this. About five years ago, I came to the realization that my life was one distraction after another. My gosh, despite my best intentions of trying to be a leader in all of my roles, every part of my life as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a coach, as a person in my faith community, whatever it may be, I began to realize that despite my clarity and best efforts, gosh, there are some days where the wheels are off the bus at 9 o'clock in the morning despite my best intentions. And I, and I became concerned about that, that how do I manage these distractions? And then as I had conversations with clients and colleagues, I began to realize, and you know where I'm going with this, I began to realize that I'm not alone. Gosh, everybody I'm talking to is feeling distracted. So over a series of months of, frankly, praying and meditating on it and talking to some, some advisors of mine, I came to realize that it was my compass. It's, it's the compass. I talk about this idea of congruence. Congruence is one of my favorite words. I, I've had it as a leadership word of the year for two years in a row. It's the only word. I've had a leadership word of the year for many, many years that I use to guide me and kind of connect me to what I'm supposed to be doing in, that, in my work. But at any rate, this particular technique is a reflection of that experience, and it's a series of questions that you ask yourself every morning. And I take them through it, and each person that attends will be getting a compass calibration card to take away with them that then they can practice over 21 days. How great and is that? Yeah, and it's been very powerful for me. I would say realistically in the last five years I have done it all but maybe a, a dozen times in five years I missed it. And on the days that I miss doing it, I know I miss doing it by probably 9 or 10, 10 o'clock in the morning because I'm feeling scattered. Right, you've got to start your day over again. Yeah, you I You know, do. one of the things I want to talk about, too, is because, you know, this keynote is not just for people who are in leadership roles, right? Oh, that's right. That's the, correct. Right. This is for, for everybody working, you know, working at a job. And I'll go back to my, I'll go back to my Channel 30 days, right? I was in this spot. I, w I felt like I was in this hole because I was the weekend anchor, and the weekday lady was never going to leave. Yeah. And I was always at the mercy of the news director, and, you know, maybe this news director, you know, wasn't a huge fan. Mm -hmm. But had I thought differently, you know, and had I had said, I'm going to do the best at what I can, and I'm still going to be a leader and a an addition, great addition to this organization, guess what happens? That person finally did leave. I could have had that job. That news mm -hmm. director who didn't like me moved on and got another job, and somebody else comes in. Yeah. I guess my point is, regardless of where you're at in your position, true or false, you should always have your eye on the ball further up the, the, the food, ch food chain, right? Because you yeah, can do yeah. it. And, and just being aware of that, and, you know, back to one of the earlier points about leader, leadership being a choice. If we follow that thinking, we come to realize that it is applicable to everybody. But here's the other point that I think is equally powerful. It, it's not limited to this space we call work, right? Mm -hmm. To your point. It shows up everywhere. I made reference to that a moment ago. I can be a leader and a role model in every single role I play. We, the, the three of us on this call and many, many, many of our listeners, can quickly identify people in, in our lives that have the qualities that we admire, that have the characteristics that embody 
integrity and, and trust and respect and humility and all of these factors that go into being a leader. And some of these people don't work. Some of them don't have a job title. Maybe some are retired. Maybe some aren't even of that age to be able to work. But um, to that point, it is available to all of us. And it becomes, I think it becomes, I think at some level, when we build that clarity, a big part of having that clarity is to be able to share it. And that's, frankly, the mission that I'm on. It's trying to create more leaders and to help more people understand that, you know what, you have influence, you have this capacity and guess what? It shows. It can show up in every part of your life. Dave, Is David, it, how how does one make choices, however, under duress? You know, when you've got a really a supervisor that doesn't get you, or you're not making a you know great living, or you know you are a vic a genuine victim yeah. of of issues in the workplace. You know how. How you know that's where the rubber meets the road, that's making right. the right choice when yeah. you're in a difficult spot. How, yeah. how does one do that? Well, for starters, it's 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 different for every single person, and that makes it complex. But I think as a baseline, it's about examining our self-talk because part of what keeps us in that mode. Now, granted, I deeply respect the fact that there are many external factors at play in any of these situations. But I think acknowledging that and the capacity that we have in many cases, I will be very cautious to say many versus all, because I don't believe it's true in all cases, out of respect for people. But I think in many cases, we have more capacity and more options than we give ourselves credit to. Right, and, we, ha and we have to look at those. You and, know and I think it, I know that's, what, that's what's made me stuck. That's where I see a lot of people get stuck. And, and I'm not judging. You know, when I talk about the behaviors, I'm always very quick to say, this is not a case of me saying, here's the magic formula. I am not saying for a second that, you know what, if everybody chooses to be a navigator, their life is different. Right. It, it, it was a long journey for me. It was many, many, many years. Right, but you, it's not a cookie-cutter approach, as you mentioned. No, it's not a cookie-cutter right. approach. So I, want, I, think, I, wanna, I just want to, before we run out of time here, I want to let people know again, um, the conference is coming up. It's going to be on the Wesleyan campus, and, you know, it's Monday, October 22nd. And if you've ever been on the Wesleyan campus in the fall time, during fall. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely right. gorgeous. Yeah. So um, there are a number of breakout sessions. And again, registration will begin at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, there's some great breakout sessions that are happening throughout the course of the day. Um, and as well as we mentioned that you are going to be uh, the keynote speaker. And so, you know, it's really good professional development. I think it's, it's even good personal development, right? Um, sure. There's a lot of great speakers. That I've seen the lineup. I'm going to try to make a few of them. They're very interesting Topics, very interesting people, get all, get us all to be thinking. Right, right. and you're uh, the keynote um, from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. That's correct. And again, the keynote is discovering your role in creating a fantastic work workforce. And we also want to mention, too, that sponsorship opportunities are still open as well. So if you're out there and, and you'd like to sponsor uh, the Connections annual conference, you can do that as well. All the information, Charlie, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show, is on the website at theconnectioninc.org. So everybody who's got, you know, their butts in the seats at this conference, there's something in it for everybody. That's why they do this. And a lot of thought goes into, um, you know, benefits of this. You know, you go there for a reason. And how can you improve, you know, if you improve, I believe, your your life at work, you improve your life at home, and it all just kind of rolls, you know, rolls, roll. rolls, exactly. And it sounds like there's going to be some great tools. And it's like they say in a meeting, you know, take what you want, and leave the rest. Leave the rest. And yeah. if you get a nugget, a nugget of useful information, that's that's great. But you know, one of the other challenges I wanted you to talk about, if you could uh, briefly, is you know sometimes people find themselves, let's say, at the top, and who's got the nerve to approach them to say, mm -hmm. I don't like your wife did. You said, mm -hmm. I don't like you're not that fun anymore, or I don't like hanging out with you because I believe too that sometimes we get to a certain point in our position, whatever it is, and people are intimidated or afraid to say anything mm -hmm. to you with that feedback. Are you going to yeah. talk at all about that as well? Well, yeah, there's there's a part of it because I think what one of the questions that I one of the topics that I introduce in the conversation is, and it's tied to the congruence and it's tied to the the compass calibration card too at the end is so what is it that you're known for? 
how do you know that? <laughs> you know, because part how we're showing up with those behaviors, as we know, not only has a big impact on our, our satisfaction, our happiness, our health, of course, but it also has a big impact on our reputation. What is that telling us? Mm-hmm. And, and, it's, and I think it's about, and I don't mean to belabor the permission point, but I have to say it again, it's about accepting the fact that I can give myself permission to hang out and explore this and, and, to, and, to be, and begin to thinking about, so how, how does that play out? What might that person tell me? And I'm what, thinking a lot of times that people are known for things that they don't think they're known for. Like, oh, you're... I, people sometimes think I'm intimidating. I never think of myself as intimidating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure, Ann, you sometimes feel that way. Mm-hmm. I bet there's a discrepancy between, a lot of times, between you know what people think they're perceived for, what they're actually perceived for, for better or for worse. Right. I mean, yeah. I am intimidating. I know that. And I, I really work at that. I try not to be because, and it's interesting because I'm, you know, different at work than I am at home. Mm-hmm. You know, even, you know, raising my kids at work, I was the boss. I was a decision maker. But when I went home, I let all that go. It's like, I don't even ask me where I want to go out to eat. Somebody else figure it out. Mm. So, you know, I think, I think we have different personalities and different right. roles. Yeah, right. um, but I also appreciate awareness. If someone says to me, you know what, you really have an edge to you today, or I really don't appreciate the way you said this or that. I appreciate that. I appreciate feedback. Just like on my golf game, when somebody gives me, you know, some feedback on my shot, I get better and Mm -hmm. I'll I'll work at that. So I think that's the other thing. It's, we are all, this is all going to give us something to think about, right? Yeah. And you know, one other thing that I should mention, you'll appreciate this in the work, in the presentation, I'm going to reference a link to an assessment that people can get on accountability and leadership behavior. And within that, there's an individual one. It's the Navigator Inventory 2.0. But I also have a 360 version. And the 360 version is specifically intended for leaders at any level, anyone for that matter, to be able to seek feedback from others about how they measure up with these 20 behaviors around accountability and personal leadership. And I, I don't have that available now. I, I have it, of course, but I just I haven't I haven't put it in the portal yet. But I'll make sure in advance of the twenty second that through the link that I provide folks, they'll have access to both the individual navigator inventory two point oh and the three sixty version. And I'll bring that. I, I will make reference to that in the keynote to ensure that people feel free to go ahead and access it at no right. charge whatsoever. And yet I appreciate and, these takeaway tools, too, because yeah. sometimes I'll go to a conference or I'll go see a speaker or I'll go to church, and I leave there and I'm all inspired, and then fast forward two minutes and I'm right back to my old miserable <laughs> self, right? So sometimes like this compass you know, feature that you're talking yeah. about having access to, um, you know, if it becomes a habit or if it becomes, you know, a point of, you know, let's conscientiously work on this for, you said, what is it? You said yours is 21 days? 21 days, well, 5 to 10 minutes a day. Okay. I see in recovery, yeah. it's 28 days to change a, a behavior or, or a habit. Yeah. It really isn't 28 days. It's a lifetime. But anyway, it's that's, a, a, lifetime, a, that's right. a whole nother story. So yeah. this sounds so interesting. I, I really appreciate you, um, you know, giving even for our listeners you know, some useful information mm-hmm. that they could use. But it's, it's just one more reason to attend this conference. And, again, it's at Wesleyan University, October 22nd from 9 to 5. And it's an annual conference, so we'll have another one next year on in the October 20s. And we look forward to meeting you, David. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you very much, Charlie. Thank you, Ann. It's been delightful to speak with you. Look forward to seeing you at the conference. Absolutely. And, again, the um, place that you can go for information for sponsorship or registration is the Connection Inc. Org. And once again, I want to thank you, Charlie, for being here with me in the studio today. And of course, another thank you to our special guest, David O'Brien, uh, president of Work Choice Solutions and keynote speaker at this big conference coming up. And to you, our listeners, we couldn't do it without you. We want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of The Connection right here on WTIC News Talk 1080.